Today I'm going to show you five incredibly useful hacks for VBA. Now these are things that I didn't know when I started with VBA, but now I use them all the time. So let's go ahead and get started. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. There is one really powerful function VBA that most people aren't aware of. It is incredibly useful for manipulating strings. Let's take a look. When we want to extract data from a string, we typically use left, mid and right like this. Now the problem of course is that this only works when the fields are a fixed size. If for example the first field is longer, then this code will no longer work. Let's run the code and you can see that it's only picking five characters from Dragon. What we normally do to deal with variable fields is that we use in string to find the delimiter. And once we have the position of the delimiter, we take away one and this will give us the number of characters to extract. You can see this code brought us back the first item. Now we want to get the last item. And this is the code we've added and you can see it's a bit more complicated. But it works fine. Although things start to get really messy when we want to get an item that isn't first or last. We use this code, which you can see is incredibly complicated. It gives us the right result, but really the code is just too much to deal with. So what we can do instead is we can use the split function. So what the split function does is it splits the string by delimiters. So we put in the string and the delimiter we want to split it by, and it gives us back an array. Now once we have the array, it's very trivial to access the item we want. We just simply put in the index. When we run the code, you'll see that it printed out all the items as expected and this code is much simpler. Now once we have the items in an array, there is many possibilities. So here, for example, we can read all the items in reverse. So this is a simple way of reversing a string. When we run this code, you'll see that all the items come out in reverse. Now another thing we can do is we can count the items in a string. So we can count the number of words. And you can see here we got three and now we get one. Another thing that we can do is we can write directly to the worksheet from split. And you can see here that what it's gonna do is write to A1, B1, and C1. So I'm gonna show you a couple of really useful watch window hacks. So when we're debugging code, we're often faced with ranges like this, and it's not obvious what the range actually is. So what we can do is we can add the range to our watch window. So I'm doing Shift F9 and then clicking on Add. And once it's in the watch window, we can add the address property. So the address property of any range simply tells us where the range is referencing. And you can see up above here, I've just made the watch window a bit bigger. And you can see it's B5 to J6. Now we can use address with any range. So a complex range like this one, we can simply add dot address to the end and it tells us instantly what the address is. So this is incredibly useful when you're debugging code. Now often when we're debugging code, the range isn't enough, and sometimes we want to know what worksheet it belongs to. So we can use range.parent, and that gives us the worksheet object. So if we open it up here in the watch window, you can see that it's simply a worksheet object with all the normal properties. Now if we use the name property of this, then what we have is the name of our worksheet. And you can see here that our worksheet name is data. So again, this is very useful if we just want to make sure that our range is on the right worksheet. Now there's one final thing that we want to do, and that's the workbook. So often we're dealing with multiple workbooks and we want to make sure we're dealing with the right worksheet in the right workbook. So we can do parent parent. So the parent of the worksheet is a workbook. And then we can simply just use the name to give us back the name of the workbook. Now we can also get the path by using the path property. And you can see that that gives us the path. Now, if we want to get the full file name with the folder and the name, we can use full name. And you can see here that we've got the full name of our workbook. These properties are incredibly useful when you're debugging VBA code. I'm gonna show you two really efficient ways of getting the range in VBA. Now, when I started with VBA, I used to get the range like this. I used to get the last row I'd get the last column and then I'd use them to build the range using cells. And while this worked, it required a lot of unnecessary code. A much easier way to get the range is by using the current region of the range property. And this requires very little code. So if we run this code here, what you'll see is that it gives us back 
all the adjacent data, so A1 to D11. So let's have a look at how the current region works. If we select any cell here and press Control Asterisk or Control Shift 8 on most keyboards, it will give us the current region, which is all the adjacent data. Now, the current region ends at blank rows and blank columns. So if we add data to column F, like you see here, and then we run the current region, what happens is it still gives us back the adjacent data, but it doesn't give us back the data in column F because there's a blank column in between. Now, if we put a D in column E, and then we run current region, you can see that it gives us back everything because there's no blank column separating. So this is what current region is, and this is how we use it in VBA. One disadvantage of using current region is that it gives us all the records back, but there's no way of getting rid of the header. So how we get rid of the header is like this. We say set range equals range offset, which moves the entire range down one. And then we resize the range to be one row less. And this essentially gives us all the records back without the header. Now don't worry if this looks complicated at first, because this is the same code you'll always use to remove the header. Now let's run the code and you'll see it gave us back A2 to D11 which is the range without the header. An even better way of dealing with ranges is if we can convert our data into a table. So we can do Control T and hit OK, and now we've got a table. And now I'm gonna rename this TB data. So once we have it as a table, there's many ways we can get the range. If our data is in a table, we can reference it using a list object. So we declare the table as a list object. It's a little bit confusing, but just always remember that this is what a table is. Then we set the table equal sheet data and we can use the list objects collection to get us back the table using the table name. Now once we have the table, then it's very easy to get different ranges. So we get the full range by just using the range property. And if we run the code, you'll see that it gave us back A1 to D11. But what's really nice here is if we just want the data, we can use what's called the data body range. And just like it says, it just gives us back the data body. Now we can also get the header range. And again, that's just header row range. And when we run this code, what this will give us back is A1 to D1. Now there's also a totals row range as well, which is very useful if you have a totals row. So another thing that we can do is we can use list columns. And when we use list columns, we can actually reference them by the header name. So this gives us back the list column country. And when we run the code, you can see it gives us back the range B1 to B11. Now a useful thing we can do here as well is we can just get the data body range of this as well. So this will give us B2 to B11. So you can see using tables is very useful for getting the ranges that we want. So now I'm gonna show you why using an array is faster than using a range. So we've got 5,000 records here. And what we're going to do is we're going to read through all these records as a range. And each time I read through a row, I'm going to store two values in two separate variables. Now you can see I've got a timer kicking off at the start and I've got a timer printing the result at the end. And this will give us the result in milliseconds. So when we run this code, you'll see that we got 105 milliseconds. So we'll run it a few more times just so that we can get an average speed. And you see the average speed is around 94, 95. So now that we know how fast it is to run through a range, let's try and run through an array and see what the time difference is. Let's rewrite this code to use an array instead of a range. So we'll just paste the original one down here and we'll make changes to it here. So the first thing we do is we use array as variant. So this declares our array. And then we just set the array equal current region and that will automatically convert a range into an array. Now reading through the for loop, we start at L bound, which is the first item in the array, and U bound is the last item. We then change range cells to array, and then we remove dot value, because we don't need it. Now just change the outgoing text to array, and just change the name to use array. So when we run the code, you'll see it's 28, 10, 22, 10, and so on. So we're getting an average of about 15. So what you can see is that using the array for the very same thing is about six times faster. And this is just using a small amount of data and we're doing something very simple. So you can imagine on a big project where you're dealing with a huge amount of data that it would be exponentially slower. I'm gonna show you something I didn't learn until I was using VBA for quite a while. So if we look at this code, we're reading through a list of data. Now the problem is when we run the code, we get the type mismatch error, which is fine. But because we're using error handling, 
It basically doesn't stop on the line and it throws the error to our message box line. So if we're debugging the code and we want to find the line with the error, we can step through the code like this. But the problem we have now is that we have a for loop and the for loop runs 5,000 times. So we may have to go through it a lot of times to find the error. Now there's a simple way we can actually go to the line that has the error. So we can go to tools, options, and then we select the general tab and we select break on all errors. So what this does is it turns off error handling. So we can do this temporarily and then run our code, hit debug, and you can see it stops on the line with the error. Now if we put the cursor over I, what you'll see is that it shows we're on row 4995. So this is the row that has the error. And if we check our data, you'll see that in column H, we have 32A, which is a string. So someone's put in a letter by mistake into that cell. Now, one thing we should always do when we're finished debugging like this is we should turn the error handling back on so that we don't come back to the code in a couple of weeks and then be wondering why our error handling isn't working. If you like this video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it.